So verse 11 says, They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Right, so the, the prophets and priests, they've been given, uh, they have not been giving the people what they need to, to be healed. Uh, they need the truth of the word of God, but they've been, uh, they've been lying, they've been saying that everything is okay, they've been saying everything, that, that there's peace with the Lord, and that is a spiritual malpractice. Uh, just like looking at a person who's drowning and giving them cold, refreshing cup of water. That's not what the person needs. They don't need more water. Um, the, the people don't need to be re- reassured of, about peace because they're drowning in the peace that they have with their own sin. It's killing them. They, they need the truth. They need, they need repentance. Um, but the people, they, they remain adamant in their sin. Verse 12, Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among the fallen when I punish them. They shall be overthrown, says the Lord, when I would gather them, declares the Lord. There are no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree. Even the leaves are withered. And what I gave them has has passed away from them. So they're sinning without shame. Um, And so God is going to bring about justice. He's going to, the Babylonians are going to come and overtake them. God found no, no fruit, uh, and, and even, even the leaves were, were drying up. Uh, he says, what I gave them has passed away from them. Uh, so verses 14 and 15 is actually a, a response from, from the people. Why do we sit still, gather together, let us go into the fortified cities and perish there, for the Lord our God has doomed us to perish and has given us poisoned water to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. For a time of healing, behold, terror. So, uh, did God doom? Did God doom the people to perish? He did offer them chances to repent, didn't he? He did. Uh, we, we've, we've seen this. Um, so yes, he is providing the judgment that they deserve, but he, he has been slow to anger. He has been steadfast in his love. He's provided every opportunity for the people to, to repent, uh, and they haven't. And so, in, in, in a sense, the people are giving lip service to God, saying that, yeah, that they've, they've sinned, but they're also, they're also blaming God and saying that God has doomed them to perish. Uh, but they've, the people have brought this doom on themselves. They, they're the ones responsible for their actions and, and, and their sin. They're the ones responsible for the fact that they have not turned and mended their ways and repented. They, they, have, they have brought their, the, their doom on themselves. Uh, and they say that they looked for peace, but, they, but the peace they looked for wasn't in the Lord, uh, in, the, in their sin, um, but in their sin as the prophets and priests proclaimed to them. Uh, that's where they were trying to find their peace, was the prophets and priests saying, oh, there's peace, but that wasn't true. It was a lie. And so the Lord speaks again in, in verses 16 and 17. The snorting of their uh, horse, horses heard from Dan at the sound of the neighing of their stallions, the whole land quakes. They come and devour the land and all that fills it. For behold, I am sending among you serpents, adders that cannot be charmed, and they shall bite you, declares the Lord. Um, this is the way that the Lord does decides to describe the judgment that's coming upon the people. And this brings up memories from uh, Numbers. Do you remember? It's Numbers uh, 21 where there's these poisonous serpents that come and are biting the people and, and God tells Moses to make a, a bronze snake and put it on a pole and if anyone's bitten and then looks at the pole that they, they would be healing. Um, and that, that healing came from the Lord, not actually from the, the bronze, 
bronze serpent. This brings, uh, there's a reminder of, of that. Uh, and so then Jeremiah, he, he's grieving over the people. Uh, look at verse 18. I'm actually going to read into verse, into chapter nine here. Let's let's read a little bit. Uh, so, chapter eight, verse eighteen. My joy is gone; grief is upon me. My heart is sick within me. Behold, the cry of the daughter of my people from the length and breadth of the land is: Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images and with their foreign idols? The harvest is, is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the wound of the daughter of my people is my heart wounded. I mourn and dismay has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? Oh, that my head were waters in my eyes, a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert a traveler's lodging place, that I might leave my people and go away from them, for they are all adulterers, a company of treacherous men. They bend their tongue like a bow, falsehood and not truth has grown strong in the land, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, declares the Lord. Let everyone beware of his neighbor and put no trust in in any brother, for every brother is a deceiver and every neighbor goes about as a slanderer. Everyone deceives his neighbor and no one speaks the truth. They've taught their tongue to speak lies. They weary themselves committing iniquity, heaping oppression upon oppression and, and deceit upon deceit. They refuse to know me, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them and test them, for what else can I do? Because of my people, their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks deceitfully. With his mouth, each speaks peace to his neighbor, but in his heart he plans an ambush for him. Shall I not punish them for these things, declares the Lord, and shall I not avenge myself on a nation such as this? I will take up weeping and wailing for the mountains and lamentation for the pastures of the wilderness because they are laid waste so that No one passes through, and the lowing of cattle is not heard. Both the birds of the air and the beasts have fled and are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a lair of jackals, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. We see Jeremiah uh, grieving, uh, weeping uh, for the people. Their unfaithfulness to God, he's sick about it. And it's, it's proper to be grieved over, over sin. Even other people's sin, it can, that can affect you. Uh, the rejection of the Lord should, should be a sad, a sad thing. Um, it, is, it is devastating. Um, at, at the beginning of verse, at the beginning of chapter 9, we see Again, Jeremiah weeping, and this is one of the verses about that he gets this nickname of being the weeping uh, prophet. And his weeping is coming from his love for the people. He cares about them, uh, and they've, they've rejected the Lord. Um, and, he, and he understands this. He, he speaks of even uh, that he would have a lodge in the desert that he could leave the people behind and, and, and go away because he knows that they've been a, adulterous and, and treacherous people. And we see the deceit that the people have been living in. So look at chapter 9, verse 3. How does, how does falsehood grow strong in a land? It says, falsehood and not truth has grown, grown strong in the land. How does that happen? They keep repeating lies. Yeah, it, it, it speaks, at, at the end of verse 3, it says, they proceed from evil to evil. Like, that's the continuation. When you, 
when, when you proceed from something, you are going out from it. So it's like they've done evil and are going out from it to, to do more. Uh, proceeding from, e- from evil to evil. Um, it, it's a practicing of sin. There's, there's no repentance. Um, we see that in verse 5, no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Uh, they weary themselves committing iniquity. It's that continuing of, of even, even teaching themselves to, to speak lies. And, and in that, they're being like the devil. They're conforming to his image, the deceiver. Um, it's, it's a, that's a heavy thing, isn't it? Uh, we can look at ourselves and realize that uh, we're, we're guilty of having done this before too. Uh, we, we've been guilty of, of speaking lies. Um, and something I'd, I'd just like to mention, as, cause there, there's a lot of, of sin that's being confronted, is that in sin, the, the Israelite people and, and us, when we sin, uh, we, we move away from it's a rejection of the purpose that, that God has created us to live. Uh, and the, the, the question, what is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And it's to glorify him. When we sin, we're moving away from, from, that, from that purpose. And when we repent, it's a turning back to what we've been created for, the purpose that the Lord has for us, that, that we do have purpose. We, we have purpose to, to glorify him, to be obedient to him, and to live a, a flourishing life as we obey uh, what, what he has um, commanded. And so it's important as we, because we talk about sin and talk about repentance, that, that this isn't just like a, a, a scolding of like a, a don't do that type of uh, conversation. It's not, this isn't about a, a moral, moralism about not doing uh, certain things. Confrontation is sometimes necessary. Scripture does say that we're called to rebuke sometimes. Um, but we also need to see that, that the call to repent and go and sin no more is, is a call to an abundant life of, of joy in the Lord, uh, of, of purpose in, in the Lord. Uh, true satisfaction and, and true joy. And so God confronting the people in their sin, and God confronting us in our sin, this is, this is God's love for us. It's for our good. Um, it's for our, for our joy, for our satisfaction in him, uh, that we would fulfill the purpose that we were created for. Um, it's God's love um, in this. And so even though we recognize ourselves as, as sinners, um, we, we must also recognize that uh, the Lord in his grace has provided salvation for those who repent and believe, uh, providing f- flourishing and joy uh, for your life. Um, freedom in him. We're, we're more than conquerors in Christ. Uh, and, and in these passages in Jeremiah, they are hard-hitting. Um, but even in, in them, we can still see the goodness of God. Look back at um, chapter 8, at the end of chapter 8, verse 22. So there's, there's a list of questions. Chapter, verse 19 says, Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Asking all, all these questions. And verse 22, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Um, they've, provoked the, they've provoked the Lord. Um, the balm of Gilead, the, the physician that they are in desperate need of is Jesus. <laughs> and he's, the, the, the prophets and priests, they have healed the wound lightly by saying that there is peace when there is no peace. That, that's, a, that's a false healing that 
the prophets and priests provided to the people, but Jesus provides the true healing because he's the he is the great physician that provides healing for our hearts, healing for our souls, our our, our life. Um, and so, in this, we we can have hope, even as we see uh, see our sin. We can see the love of the Lord as he's pursued after us and provided us with the physician that can cure us <laughs> uh, and provide us with health and life. Uh, so let's, let's pray. Uh, God, we're grateful that you are good. We're grateful that you've provided uh, to us Jesus Christ um, who can prov- pr- provide healing for our souls that we desperately need. I ask that you would be working in our hearts and our minds, that you'd continually be in your love, exposing the sin in our life, that we would, by your grace, repent and and turn to you, and that we would 